Okay, it goes on to say, significantly, laughter is the main social response to Anansi as a character. In addition, it is the verbal comments which often underscore the laughter that society's attitude to him is clarified. Of these, the most represent represent representative is Anansi's wealth, the expression of successes and triumphs which are not likely to last. Indeed, most of Anansi's successes are doubtful and temporary. Okay, good. So, we could go through more, but the basic idea, my brother, that I wanted to bring forth to our people. Yes, we are familiar with Anansi, and I've been doing a series. Anansi's story. Yeah, Anansi's story. Yeah. And I've been doing a series of, you know, the whole aspect of the... I've been going deeper into the book um, on my program, The Mystic Vibration. But what I'm saying here is this. Many of us and the audience need to grasp this for when we start to go biblical. Many of us, we're not aware of the fact that as ancient African people, now it's very good for us to, you know, quote history. That's why I love how the griot does take it sometimes and the angle that he comes from. He, he obviously, he's not killing the book, you know. But he's letting you know, when you read it from a book, there's a lot of doubt following you. Mm. And he's telling you what he's seen with his own eyes or the record he got from those who were there. Primary or secondary evidence, you call that in scholarship. Mm. So you got to have a certain level of respect for that. Now, this is how the same art that he's using, as we call him, the griot, the art that he's using, this is the same art that we've used for millenniums. To literally, listen to me good, to literally um, to, to continue our history, our morality, our culture, our theology, and I will use the term even our religion. We always use the art form of storytelling, of writing, of music, singing, song, and dance to express these things that I just mentioned. Again, our history, our beliefs and religion, our theology, our culture, and even our morality. Again, one more time, because I want the audience to understand. We're not just gaffing today, we're teaching. For us to express these things, we didn't just write a book. We wrote it, we spoke it, we sang it, and we played it on music. So that is our culture. We had that ability of expressing ourselves, as it said, even through the theater. So when we, when, when we uh, would have a skit or a play, it was not just for fun. We were sending a message out into the future that should last for centuries, or as I said, thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, even hundreds of thousands of years. And I do dare say, that is how a lot of our sacred books have come down to us, because we like to say that Africa is the first, and we were the writers of this, and the first Muslims were black, and the Bible was written by black people, and, and even those who used to deny it, put their hands up in the air and say, okay, you're right, but you don't make a difference, or what, we all want people. All of that is pretty. But when you understand now, again, the culture where most of these writings are coming from, you cannot divorce yourself from the science or the scientific outlook of the writers. I will repeat again, in Africa, when we wrote, even our history, when we wrote our history, we wrote it in a allegorical form. That is why Anansi now, is, as described here, is seen as a character that can be seen in everyone. Anansi is known as the everyone. You could see yourself reflecting in Anansi. The storytelling. The storytelling. It's very unique that even with the character of the Christ, the Christ would tell you that, you know, you know look for him within you. You know, you know, and we become a people that totally separates ourselves from that concept of the God figure in you or the Christ in you. Okay, good. Now, saying all that to say, and I'm going to, um, we ain't going to take no break right now. Huh? Uh, no, go ahead. But, but yeah, let's oh, take yeah, a break and then we come right back. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. The Lenten season is upon us. It's uh, we're living it. It's 
Easter, and, and today we're focusing on Easter. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had the children who was doing uh, their Calypso competition, Black History Month, that comes up on the 5th. Uh, the hymns and the Passion of Easter will come up on the 1st. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have Good Friday and Friday, Easter Monday, and today we're looking at Easter. Well, there's a green hill far away, you know. You, you, you had the religious signs Without the city wall where our great Lord was crucified, who I would say lived to save us all. But anyway, mm -hmm. let me read here quickly for those who have their Bible, the book of John, um, St. John's chapter uh, 20. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. and we're going to read, um, we're basically going to go through quickly, as, as quickly as I can, the Gospels that deal directly with the resurrection of the Christ. And John chapter 20 says here, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene. And um, I know you're watching my old Bible. I had, I had this Bible here. <laughs> wow, how long? Even before I was growing a beard, eh? Yeah. That's how long I have this Bible. And you, you can't replace it? it has, um, <laughs> don't worry. It has been replaced several times. Okay, good. It's overused. It's, it's one of those use ancient... It, use it. It, it needs to be retired and put in a case, some gold box. And, okay, good. Yeah, that's how long this was, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had this a long time. Anyway... The first day of the week, look at all the marks in it, you see all yes. the under the right. Mm. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark into unto the sepulchre, to, to, and seeth the stone take it away from the sepulchre. Then she run it and cometh to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved, I'm going to say Jesus, or Christ loved, and said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. And we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and came unto the sepulchre. Um, so they ran together. They ran both together. And the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. And he stooped down and um, looked and he saw, uh, let me see, he saw a man in linen cloth. No, he saw the linen clothes, sorry, lying. Yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, all of the Shakespeare language, following him, and went into the sepulchre, and see the linen cloth or clothes lie. And a napkin that was about the head, uh, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together uh, in a place by itself. Okay, then it goes on to say, let me just skip a place here. Bam, 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 yeah. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Christ standing, and knowing not that it was him, um, Christ said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Um, whom seest thou, or whom seekest thou? She supposed him to be the gardener. Said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne hence his body, please tell me where hence thou hast laid him, and I will go and take him away. And Christ said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabbi, or Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Christ said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, mm. but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascended unto my father and, uh, and your father, unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. And then he said, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. And it goes on. I wouldn't read all of that. Okay, basically, even for those who know the story, that would still be good knowledge. A lot of us speak of East and we don't even know the story. So I think it's still good. I'm going to continue to read now from the, the book of Matthew, chapter 28, the very same story, but a different version. And it says here, in the, the end of the Sabbath, as the beginning to dawn towards the first day of the week. This is some strange language, eh? I'm yeah, telling Shakespeare. I'm telling the man. Anyway, <laughs> came <laughs> me. What, what, what one speak when you listen to that, you figure you're really an anti-story. Yeah, like, this is really, I'm telling you. <laughs> as if God speak like this, oh, thou cometh up. Anyway. <laughs> came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment, his raiment white as snow. 
And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Women, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Christ, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come and see the place where the Lord laid, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth forth unto into Galilee, and there ye shall see him. And he said they departed quickly and um, I think as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Christ met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him at by the feet and worshipped him. And he said unto them, Be not afraid. Go and tell my brethren that I go unto Galilee, Galilee unto you. No, okay. I'm hearing two different stories here. Mm, just that. You see. <laughs> no, I'm now, hearing two different versions. Obviously, um, when you read both of these Gospels, as you just pointed out, there's a slight difference. Um, a slight? Uh, let me just say, um, I'm, I'm, I'm being uh, God's advocate here. Mm -hmm. we just Let us just say, I mean, if I give an account of a story, and you give an account of a story. It's going to be two different accounts. And the engineer give an account. And let's say your next guest or whoever you but have. What happens if we're all here at the same time? Um... But, you know, as I said, at the same time, yes, when we were at um, school, we used to play this game that 30 of us would be in a circle and one person would give, like, uh, yeah. whisper something in your ear. For him know. to tell somebody. There's a red foul coming over the fence. But at the time it reached the 30th person. There's a, a blue car story. coming down the street, <laughs> you know. So, I'm, I'm, I'm being, as I say, God's advocate. Mm. And I'm trying to look at it like, okay, let's give this some understanding. Mm. This was a long time ago, according to what we're supposed to believe. And as, as we know, it's such and such version of the story. All right. I may not even have to read the rest because what is happening here now, in the book of St. John's, it clearly says that Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. Mary Magdalene. She went by herself. Mm. And when she went, she saw the stone removed. And because she knew that's not how it was supposed to be, she went back and got two of the disciples. One of them was Simon Peter. And they ran before her. And when the first disciple went into the tomb, he saw everything well folded up and what, and he came out. And they went away. And then Mary Magdalene went in the tomb and saw an angel sitting on the tomb and he was the one that told her look the man has risen and when she came out like wow she looked back and she saw the christ and she thought he was the gardener and when she went to hold him he said hey don't touch me that's the word here touch me not mm -hmm. for i'm not yet ascended to my master the father your god and my god and etc go and tell the brethren all right now the 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 book of matthew says that the same day, you know, after the Sabbath, here came Mary and the other Mary. Okay, it's two people. All right, fair enough. I mean, as I said, it could just be a slight mistake. And the both of them came now. And this story gives you an idea of what really happened to the stone. Because an, of thunder. an angel came down and mm -hmm. moved the stone and there was an earthquake and a heap of things well, going yeah, on. Mm -hmm. Right. So that could move the stone. And, we could, and the angel, I assume, pushed mm -hmm. it away and yeah. So when they came now, the angel was sitting on the stone. He wasn't inside. They didn't have to go for anybody. They came and met him. They didn't even get to. He said, hey, just come and take a peep. The man is gone. Go and tell his disciples. And when they were on their way, they met the Messiah. And they held him by his feet. Now, remember the other one said he Do not touch me. Touch me not. Mm -hmm. Let's get it Shakespeare. You know, got to keep it in. Shakespeare. Yeah. Touch, touch me, me not. not. Oh, thou fellow. <laughs> but <laughs> I just spice in that up there. And, um, you know, um, but it, this is, it, this, they it, held him by his, feet, by his feet. And he actually told them, don't be afraid. Like, you know, everything all right, man. It's me, man. You know what I mean? I know how you feel. You know, and then he charged them to go and tell the disciples as well. All right. Let me just read quickly. I'm not going to dry it out, my brother. Believe me. Um, the book of Luke, just quickly, because we need to have a good comprehension of where we are here with an understanding of why I read what, because I know, you know, the audience now, some of the people in the audience is going to be, oh, so what does the difference and that don't make a difference. It's still, the, 
Nobody said it made a difference. I'm not comparing and contrasting. I'm just highlighting the obvious that many people overlook. Because most people that are listening, you know, as Christian as we are, and as God-loving and God-fearing and God-Bible and all of this as we are, we never took the time to critically study the book where we could even highlight these things. And to me, the term gospel, when I was small, we used to use this term. I hope it's the gospel truth you're telling me, mm -hmm. which means the term gospel means it's truth. Un the truth, unblemished, mm -hmm. without fault. So you can't tell me, boy, well, one man had a little different outlook and maybe he sees. And this is the word of God. Let's be clear here. You know, so there must be a reason because again, knowing who I am, you, you know, the most, most people are going to say, well, they're going to get defensive because they think priest Isaac is on the attack. No, I'm just showing you something to, to advance how you already look at the thing, something you may have overlooked. That's why I began by reading the marriage of a Nancy to show you how we wrote our stories in the beginning. We never wrote like how we read today. We're reading this at face value, but we always wrote in parables. That's why Christ himself always gave his stories in, in parables. parables. A sower came and sowed the seed and some grew, some went on stony ground and some in the sand and some in, in um, fertile ground and some amongst thorn because he was giving you a, 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 a metaphor of something he wants to highlight. Okay, let me just go through this quickly, my brother. Luke chapter 24. Now upon the first day of the week and very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing spices with them, prepared. Um, listen to this. It says here, um, they had prepared and certain others with them. They came to the sepulcher. They came to the sepulcher, bringing spices, which they have prepared, and others with them so we have they came so who is the they there is more than two people and others with them who are the others others is more than two people too so we have at least four people here and i'm not going to continue to read when you read luke and you read mark one version says when they went into the sepulcher there were two angels sitting down another version say that there are two angels standing up and next virgin say that they, there was one angel inside sitting down. And Matthew says that there was one angel sitting on top of the stone. He was the one that moved away the stone. Everything totally different here. One, one virgin said when they left, they were in such fear that they told no one, not a one, not even the disciples. And next virgin said they went away in joy and they met the disciples and told them all of the great joy. So I'm saying, you know, it is obvious there ain't no human being. You may have the, the, the excuse for why it is so, but there is nobody in the sound of my voice that can tell me that there's not something here for us to figure out because it doesn't make sense that the stories can be so Different. diverse, mm -hmm. extremely diverse. You know, and this is this is in the Bible. This is the gospel specifically. Mm -hmm. No, the reason why I highlighted, I'm going to highlight something else too, just for 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 the clarity of what I'm saying. In the book of Second Chronicles, uh, no, First Chronicles and Second Samuel. Oh, pardon me for that. There is a scripture that speaks about David. Uh, we're getting back to Easter. Eh? There's a scripture that speaks about David. Um, numbering the children of Israel. For whatever reason, David numbered the children of Israel like he took a census. And the Lord wasn't too pleased with the census that David took. So David, um, he was punished. The children of Israel actually got a piece of that punishment. But David was given the choice of which punishment he would like to take. Okay, now what I'm saying, in the, if you understand how the, the, the narrative of the Bible the reason why certain stories repeat themselves, for example, the four Gospels, because they're given by different accounts. Um, the, the book of Samuel, you see a lot of what is in the book of Samuel repeating itself in Chronicles and the Kings. So you see the, the story of David twice. You see the story of Solomon twice. A lot of things are repeated um, in the Bible. So you get a chance to actually cr um, scrutinize them. And there are other versions of these same stories that have been taken out. So now what I would like to read for you, in the book of Samuel, 2 Samuel, um, chapter 1, just the first verse, it says here, 
uh, not chapter 1, chapter 24, Second Samuel chapter 24, the first verse, it says here, And the anger, and again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. He say, the anger of the Lord was against Israel, and he, the Lord, moved David to go and, and, and number Israel. Now, First Chronicles chapter 21 says the exact same story. We don't have the time to read the chapter, but if you read both chapters, the wording is almost the same, the wording, as we like to say. Chapter 21, verse 1 says here, And Satan stood against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Now you hear that. Samuel says, And the Lord was angry with Israel, and the Lord moved David to number Israel. First Chronicles 21 says, And Satan, uh -huh. I don't think, well, I don't think, say, last time I checked, I don't think Satan is the Lord. It says, And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Now, it's the same story. One version is clearly telling you it's the Lord. It didn't say no middleman. I know we're going to say, well, you know, it's the Lord that moved Satan to move David. Like how he, you know, he hardened Pharaoh's heart. And I can understand what you're saying. You know, all of that is good, you know, good analogy. But instead of us guessing our way out of it, let us return to the ancient tradition that we have always had of storytelling and these stories yes if we just understand that we could break a lot of these spells we have to take a break i see that we have so many things that are going on in the, uh, this lenten season mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we're here with priest isaac yes. yeah, trying to uh, get some stories mm -hmm. out of the story and as i said you know one of the main things that i'm trying to highlight here is out because we're dealing with africa eh? And um, I think we, as a society, this is how I feel at heart as a as, as society, the, 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 the community that I live in, I speak of Antigua and Barbuda. I think we have matured enough um, culturally that we could take this to another level. Because remember, I go around, you know, I get around the Caribbean and other places. So you can judge the society and the community to see how far they have advanced. As, as it relates to their African scope. And, you know, we have people around here that have been doing the work for so long. Brother Alistair Thomas, just um, previous evening, I saw good sister, sister, Ole Dele, and, you know, other ones, um, Elder King Franca, and some people that are not even on stage that have been doing the work for a long time to give us, you know, this site, this, this level of African awareness. <clears throat> now, I'm just saying, getting back to this concept, and the whole Easter science and our African tradition. I'm trying to link everything together. That's why I'm repeating it. So the audience can gather where I'm coming from. I'm not just trying to talk, not trying to sound pretty. I want when I finish today that we can say, hey, I, I understand what a man's saying there. You know? Okay. We as a people, you would hear me say, Brother Dave, let me just show you a picture quick. That picture, I know your audience won't see it, but that is the oldest Bible that exists straight up and it looks right mm -hmm. that is um it looks similar to what you have in your hand there <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's but it a, has cover yes 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 it really does you know <laughs> i'm telling you <laughs> the ethiopian bible mm -hmm. and the ethiopian bible maybe facebook can see it eh? mm -hmm. the ethiopian bible now this ethiopian bible is um is, is um registered to 400 years a.d now obviously now i'm speaking as a a researcher and a scholar so obviously, maybe the layman would listen and say, 400 years AD. Man, is Moses right? The, the Ten Commandments, you know, and that's thousands. I understand that. Don't get me wrong. Not that I'm putting all of that away. But I'm just saying, again, I, th I think I said this on your program um, a few, few um, months ago. If we're going to deal with this scientifically, do you know why you refer to things like theology as a science? You check a scientist. A scientist don't go with nothing unless you can prove it. Even if the scientists believe that a star is three light years ago uh, away, unless they can see the proof, they're not working with that. They're not putting that in the book. They need the facts. So this is why scientifically now, the oldest complete 
Hebrew Bible is a thousand years old. That's and that's just a thousand years old. It's a thousand and I think one AD, and that's the Leonard Grad um, Codex. It's the oldest complete. Now you could say the Bible is written in Hebrew as much as you want, and that may be true, but you cannot find that Bible that is written in Hebrew. Um, the oldest Hebrew complete Bible is the Leonard Grad Codex. That's why I'm saying now the oldest complete Bible in general is that Ethiopian book that you see there looking raggy and old from 400 AD. Anything older than that, you may say the Dead Sea Scrolls then, mm -hmm. and the, 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 um, the scrolls they call the Silver Scrolls, but these are fragments of writings supposedly from the time, right? Now I'm saying all of that to say that it is obvious that the, the biblical works is, is, is from an African origin. It is nothing really to run from. You know, it doesn't have nothing to do. It doesn't stay in your religion. It's just a fact that the authors of the Bible, those who penned it, and those who even originally translated it, they're Africans. The Septuagint was translated by Africans um, um, in, in, in Kemet using Kemetic scrolls in the Temple of Alexandria. This is history. Good. So this is why now when you read the, the ancient stories, again, of Onans, Anansi. This is why you would hear many people like the brother you have at times, the brother from um, from um, English Harbor around that region, Liberta, Paul. Brother Paul. Mm -hmm. And he would explain clearly to the audience that a lot of the stories, just a shout out to Brother Paul, eh? a lot of Paul the stories, yes, mm -hmm. a lot of the stories you may read of in the Bible, you would see similar stories prior to that, older than that. For example, the book that is known as the 16 Crucified Saviors. People jump, oh, I don't want to hear about them things there. But the 16 Crucified Saviors, it is not a book about 16 people who were crucified before Jesus. No, it is 16 stories. None of the people in the, the 16 Crucified Saviors were literal human beings that died. No, it is just showing you 16 versions of the story of the crucifixion and the resurrection of a savior figure. And you cannot run from that. You this these stories go back at least ten thousand years old. The story of Asa and Aset, the crucifixion, the virgin birth, um, died and resurrected in three days. Um, um, the whole thing about being swallowed by a fish in the same way Jonah was swallowed by a fish when Osiris died, he was swallowed by a, a great catfish. So I'm just showing you that we have we have been telling these very same stories for thousands of years and maybe even hundreds of thousands of years but i'm sticking with the scientific evidence the dates i'm calling i'm not just guessing them out of my head you know the osarian drama goes back at least ten thousand years um the christ that we revere was two thousand years ago and it is very interesting that his story that we read about is very similar to 16 other stories that you can pull up from the ancient world. Now, you could sit down and say, oh, well, one copied from the other. That's up to you. But what I'm saying is very mystic that they're all similar. Now, let me just put this in now. Those who study hieroglyph, Egyptian hieroglyph, we all know that it is symbolic. So, for example, as I said, Anansi is seen as a spider. That is symbolic. The Anansi story, not Bert Anansi now, no, this is, this is a different Anansi. Anansewa is always seen as something symbolic. In the book of Ephesians, I think it is, St. Paul speaking of the, the, the story of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar when they brought forth Ishmael. Paul said, Paul's words are, this is an allegory. That's what St. Paul said in the Bible, that the story of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar when they brought forth Ishmael is an allegory. Now, what, does, what is an allegory? It's a metaphor. It is symbolic writing. Now, I'm saying all that to say, the reason now, even when you read the stories that we read in St. John, St. Matthew, St. Luke, and St. Mark, yes, um, it is a good argument that because these books were plagiarized and they definitely were tampered with, no one can deny that. But because they were plagiarized, you this is why you see the different versions of the same story. That could be so. But we are known as a people for writing the same story 
different times with different names and even different outcomes. We are known for that because we are a scientific people like that. We are an esoteric people. We always had the science of writing in allegory. So we have one creation story in Kemet uh, where creation was created by the god Patar. Another creation story says it was created by the god Nun. Another creation story says that Kunu, the god Kunu, um, 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 formed man on the potter's wheel. That's where the first concept of forming man on the potter's wheel comes from. But what I'm saying is that these three different creation stories, the Menphite theology, the Shabaka stone, these different creation stories came from a different time, thousands of years in between each other. So the names may have changed, the time is different, but if you read the story, it's the same story replayed itself we were not a dogmatic religious people like we are today so we understood that what we were reading although it may be history too it was still put down in an allegory form and to me as a researcher i think that's one of the main things that we are missing from ourselves as spiritual people we do not understand the esoteric message we do not understand the secret science you know and I know sometimes when I come on your program, I seem like I take a little poke here, but this is why, you know, Masons mm -hmm. will drool at some of the things that I say, because everything is coded, you know, you know, there's an esoteric message in everything. This is why, again, the Bible. So if you understand, again, the science of the resurrection now, I mentioned Jonah was swallowed by a fish. That's what the Bible says. If you notice Christ's symbol before the cross was a fish now we just passed the 21st of march which is the spring equinox you know i could have told it was going to rain that day you know but yeah i could have told it that it's just natural and it's and 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 just to put a little local touch to it that was a power day for antigua eh? for those who can always remember that is the election day not just that i i assume them that called the election knew what they were doing that's the day when the, the phallic stone aligned with the northern celestial pole. That was Mara Imbert's word, Dr. Mara, Mara Imbert, the astro-archaeologist from the University of the West Indies of Trinidad, who studied Greencastle Hill several decades ago and wrote that report that we have on this very same laptop in front of you, where she clearly showed you that, hey, the phallic stone, um, um, the power stone, makes that celestial alignment every 21st of March. It's not the first 21st of March that was utilized by, um, you know, right, to, mm -hmm. to, to harness the power. Yeah, yeah, live and direct observer really, we say that, man. So <laughs> it's no mistake, it's no joke. I mean, I could have told, I could have tell you, man, it's gonna, even if it's a drizzle, it will rain because it's the beginning of spring. Now, what I'm saying, that's around Easter time. Easter represents spring, the new beginning. That's why they call it East Star. All symbolism again. East Star is the Eastern Star. It's 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 coming from ancient sun worship. Now, when I say sun worship, sun worship has come to take 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 over solar the solar biological aspect of the sun. Yes, we observe the movements of the sun. We don't worship the sun, you know, but we understand again symbolically that the sun represents the life giver. That's what it is. Even in religion, that's why Christ is called the sun. You know what I mean? Again, it's not sun worship. If you don't understand it, uh, uh, comprehend it properly, like most of us, we don't, you will be sun worshiping. But what I'm saying now, this is why Christ is referred to as the sun. That's why he always has the sun behind of his head. You know, his sun movements and his 12 disciples has a lot to do with the sun moving through the 12 um, zodiac constellations specifically and the the cycle of the sun is an ancient science it's not, not nothing that rome made up the cycle of the sun can we can go as far back as the the the, the master of quetzalcoatl which is lord Pakal, the symbol of the feathered snake it may sound um, confusing to some but when you understand the mechanics of the sun and the rotation of the sun the sun has electromagnetic field lines because the sun is electricity it has electromagnetic field lines and they rotate at a specific pace at a specific time and when they do that rotation after 11 years it creates something known as sunspots and when you see the sunspot on a computer graph it literally looks like a snake with wings that's how it looks mm. 
And I'm saying even before we had computer graphs, the ancient people, the Mayan people, the people of Kemet, they always symbolize the, the sun with a bird with wings. That's why the medical symbol has the, the two snakes, the caduce with the wings springing off. That's an ancient symbol of the sun, the healing power of the sun. That's why the book of Malachi says that the, the, the sun shall rise with healing power in his in his wings and in that book of malachi uh, the sun the sun is with a capital s to show you that it's a, a proper noun so you go he's a, it's a, it's someone is speaking of the sun not the sun in the sky but it's spelled s-u-n and he shall come with healing powers in his wings so i'm saying all that to say that the sun represents the messiah the son of god going through the constellations east star the sun is a star you know that's why during the time of Easter or um, spring, you see the sun in the constellation of the fish or fishes, but really fish. But the Bible call more than one fish fishes. That's Shakespeare language. Let's, let's use fishes for the time. The constellation of Pisces is the fishes. So right now, as we're speaking, the sun is coming out of the fishes. So this is why the, the concept of the fish is very symbolic during the time of Easter because Easter has to do with re, um, re rejuvenation. It has to do with fertility. The sun is a is a is a fertility symbol. That's why when you open a fish, you see so much um, eggs, you know. And the Easter bunny business, all of that is a science. A, a rabbit multiplies a lot, as they say in the old cartoons. You see the the rabbit and the typewriter, ding, 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 because they, they, they're giving you this symbolic secret subliminal message that the rabbit is an animal that multiplies a lot. So this is why they portray the rabbit with an egg. You know, rabbits obviously don't lay egg, but the egg, again, is another fertility symbol. I don't know how they work this one out, but when you crack an egg, it still look like the sun again. You know, that's why they say sunny side up. Real thing, you know, sunny side up. The sun coming up, Easter, Easter egg, a heap of things, <laughs> you know, the fertility. So all of that is, is, is secret science playing with us and we are not even aware that that is taking place. But what I'm saying now, obviously, everything that I said a moment ago, um, um, everything cannot be junk. It's obvious that the Easter bunny and the Easter egg, some, we can do without that. No matter what they crafted in their mind to put that in, we can do without that. But that whole thing about the movement of the sun in the fishes and, you know, the cycle of the sun and, and, and all of these different things, that is quite interesting. Where did that come from? That is our ancient science. We observed the movements of the heavens and we wrote it in story form. Therein you have books like the Bible. The Holy Bible. Holy means sun, Helios, the sun book, the Holy Bible. That's what it is. That's why Joshua could stop the sun. You understand? Joshua is another way of saying Jesus, you know. Joshua is the Hebrew and Jesus is the Greek. If you mention Joshua's name in the New Testament, it will be written J-E-S-U-S. -S. So the man that stopped the sun just mystically happened to have the exact name as the son of God, because it's allegory again, you know. Now, this doesn't um, stick a knife in the heart of the the, his, history, um, the historical aspect of these characters. Because people will jump at you and say, oh, so we're trying to tell me Jesus never exists. And, and that's not the battle I'm going But down. you know that I have a gentleman <laughs> on my program. I know, Rasai Seren, man. I, I don't remember his name. But, All the way. <laughs> uh, he, he uh, I don't know how we missed each other, but... Uh, I was doing a program with it, with him, mm -hmm. and uh, somewhere along the line, I asked him, "So, what about Christmas? And what about uh, mm -hmm. Jesus? The, the story of Jesus' birth?" Mm -hmm. And uh, he looked at me mm -hmm. and says, "Man, I I, I gotta, gotta tell you, I gotta tell you the true story." Mm -hmm. But but we never linked up again, and I must get in touch with him because. Uh, basically, I think you had him back once. Didn't you? Yeah, I don't think we touched that. And Kauri Rasto, and yeah, I don't think we get a chance mm -hmm. to to go into that because okay. I was asking, what do you mean that there was no 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 birth uh, yeah, of yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ? No, you see why? And, I, and uh, hmm. why you tell me there was no crucifixion? Right, right. You know something similar to that. Right. And he had promised me that uh, we were again. going to discuss it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, you see, um, I mean, I could go down that road with you, you know, but the reason I wouldn't even attempt that. Is because 
the message I'm trying to impart, even specifically today, is a, a connection and a reconnection to our African tradition of storytelling. Because we read the Bible and really Because I can go down that road and this Jesus never exists, and but we can, it's like a different subject. Mm. I want the people to appreciate what I've said so far. I'm not trying to beat down the, the Dukan and Salfish for Monday, you know. Mm. I'm just trying... <laughs> I'm just trying to make them understand. But but but, mm, but Chris, right, yes, the yes. thing about this is that because of the different stories. Mm -hmm. One more quick thing. Mm -hmm. So 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 for example, reading the gospels, it we, we we could quickly jump to the conclusion that it has been tampered with and played with. That may be true. But we could also jump to the conclusion that that's the way we wrote. We didn't write it for you to believe every little detail. Mm -hmm. And that is the truth. Let's forget the Bible. That's how we wrote our history. Even our history, we wrote it in a metaphoric sort of way. It's deep. Continue. Yeah, but mm. <laughs> what what I wanted them to get out of it mm -hmm. is you read the different stories in the in the book, mm -hmm. uh, and I think you just hit the nail on the head. It's not that they were trying to fool anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just that it was their way of writing yeah, that so. story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but this is what I wanted to understand. In, 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 I think it's two, I'm trying to remember where it's Matthew, mm -hmm. where they held his feet. Yes. Right? right. Where they held his feet. And once they How come that me. is so different? Don't touch me, don't but touch yet me. still, they held his feet. Well, no, you see, I would, um, that is why I would challenge, you know, you know, my, I met good Pastor Ditson going out when I was coming in. Well, I'm, I'm longing to see the Pastor <laughs> Ditson behind one of their mics, eh? But that's why I would challenge anyone who's a quote-unquote believer. You see, if if you're going to accept what you're reading as like literal down the line and no, don't try nothing, you're going to run into problems. Because Especially this is the with same me. Bible that tells you. The Gospels so, are reading. You know, yeah, the gospel, but, the gospel but this truth. one I'm saying that says, mm. don't touch me. Don't touch me. But another one says that they, they held, held his on feet. to his feet. You know? So was it a different God, a different Jesus? <laughs> Wow, and um, I'm, I'm asking the question. How and, do we explain that? And taking, I'm coming to that, and take into consideration, each account has different angels. Um, one say they were sitting, mm -hmm. one say they were standing, mm -hmm. one say he was sitting, and one say nobody was inside. He was sitting on the stone. Mm -hmm. Again, that is why I could, or I can only, um, I can only refer back to our ancient writings again. Because I could give, I could, to you, I could speak to you about the Book of Gates. Now, these are things I know of. The Book of Gates, the Pyramid Text of Tete, um, the Pyramid Text of Pepe, the Pyramid Text of, of Yunas, um, the Coffin Text, the, the, the Papyri of Ani. So, I, I, these are books and, and manuscripts that I have read. So, how do we summarize? And I know them, but just quickly. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I could read these same Gospels and, and if you want to say, understand why they're so vastly different again because they were not written to be accepted as historical manuscript that's my point mm. but the moment we're gonna say yeah this is the historical truth then you're gonna run into problems like you're asking here because uh, because we have a different they're very different of, of what would have happened to one mm -hmm. individual I'm only going to take some time, even uh, uh, next hour on your program, to to go a little deeper into to that aspect too. You know, but 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 as we summarize, and you talk about mm. the looking and the sawfish and all that, you're not beating that down, <laughs> and, and the fish, and the, and they, they they you say the logical explanation for Jonah, the fish, mm -hmm. and all these different stories. You see the the crucifixion and the resurrection concept, the crucifixion. And the resurrection concept has been played out again, even in the Bible, several times. So even the same Jonah, since you brought Jonah up, Jonah going into the fish and being spat out in three days. Even in the New Testament, the Christ says that was an example of what should take place with him. Now, come on. I don't know. I know everybody have their own idea, you know, but nobody could tell me no fish swallowed Jonah. I mean, I do not believe that. I'm sorry. I mean, if you're upset with me, that's up to you. You know? In fact, I'm just... Uh, so it was the analogy that they were trying to draw with that story. That he went into the belly of the beast. 
That's where he went. So, so instead of giving you the exact story, okay, let me put it this way. It doesn't mean there was not a Jonah. Yes, they, they, let's say there was a Jonah who was sent by the Spirit to do a work. And he said, boy, me now go down there because you, you don't know, you now did nothing, you know. And because of his disobedience, he found himself in a quagmire. You know, he, he found himself in, in, the, in the cages of the beast, the belly of the beast, you know, you know, the dungeons of hell. It don't necessarily mean a fish, a but fish. came up and swallowed him. But when we wrote that story, that typology, we performed it. That's what we are. We are performers, theater, dance song music griots this linear way of writing is european that's what i'm saying mm. it's our enslavers that write like this and let's leave it blank you know no taste no flavor so we have learned to read like that so when we get the flavorful stuff now it's like, oh that's a lie boy you believe that eh? you know what i mean <laughs> but it's the flavor that's why people turn away from egyptian writings and the Dogan writings, and they don't want to hear them things. They just think, and Sumerian writings, and the um, 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 Umina, uh, I can't pronounce it, from the, the people of Suma, the first creation story. Something, um, Ulish, Elish, Umuna, Elish, I can't pronounce it correctly. But all of these, the Epic of Gilgamesh, all of these are symbolic stories. I could prove that the Noah story is a creation story. The Noah? The Noah. With the Ark? With the Ark. Because um, all, 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 um, all cultures believe that we're living in the fourth creation. And I do say even a Christian culture, but they're not aware. They're two, they're two obvious creation stories in the Bible. Not two creation stories, two creations, not two creation stories. There are two obvious creations in the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, my Bible in front of me don't have Genesis chapter 1. The page is gone years ago. But Genesis chapter <laughs> you need to get the new Bible. and chapter two <clears throat> represent two specific creations. Chapter one was created by God or Elohim. That's it's right there. And in the beginning, God created. And chapter two says, in the beginning, Lord God, the Lord God created. And all the way through chapter one, it says, God did this, God did that, God did the other, and God, and God called the day this, and God called the night that. In chapter two, it says, okay, and in and, and this is the creation story of the Lord God. Then it starts again. The Lord God did this, the Lord God did that, the Lord God did this. Now, from the English linear outlook, Lord God and God look the same. Mm -hmm. But when you read it in Hebrew now, supposedly the first language, God becomes Elohim. And Elohim is seven beings. The story changed. You start to bring in geometry and mathematics. It's not just in the word God. Elohim. And Elohim is seven beings. Um, um, Lord God is Yahweh. And that's one specific being. In fact, Yahweh is one of the Elohim. What kind of story is this here? And if you notice now in chapter 1 and chapter 2, the creation, the days are different. Certain things that were created on the fourth day isn't even on the fifth day in the second chapter. So I'm just saying, and, in, and Adam and Eve is not chapter 1. In chapter 1, male and female created he them. Adam and Eve was created in chapter 2. It's, that's two specific different creations. When Noah came into the scene, the world was destroyed and created again. If you see Noah as just a little rusty, dusty, Arab wearing a, a, a robe and, and, and his little goats and sheep and so you're going to see the story in the way that they were given to us but Noah go. is a God figure we gotta go thanks a lot for being with us today Priest Isaac that's going to be good you. for connecting with Dave let's pray for today Monday <laughs> stay tuned for Evolution Drive Child yes my brother give thanks a lot to say that's some heavy stuff boy. yeah Noah and Asante Sana and Nancy story that's thank you very much just for being with us all the power and might and majesty do give thanks and of course you know the mystic vibration is now 21 years in existence and we are celebrating our 21 years in the elements now on radio anu which is the broadcasting station that has been established even less than a year ago at least to the doing of this short video so the mystic vibration is a program that carries us into the other levels, into the ether, yet still well rooted and grounded on the earth, directly dealing with geopolitics and of course food, clothing and shelter. Mystic Vibration is aired on Radio Anu every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday from the hour of 6 p.m. 
to approximately 8 p.m. and that is Eastern Caribbean time. Many ones are concerned within the time frame. Although we do rebroadcast the shock of the hour, which is basically the key component, that which carries the quote unquote meat of the mystic vibration. Outside of our news briefing and commentary, outside of our Kiswahili word of the day, outside of our introduction and of course the music that we also provide. We are now offering the shock of the hour. Keep in mind the shock of the hour is the principal part of the mystic vibration. It is within the shock of the hour that you literally get the conversation, the reasoning or the discussion of the day. Sometimes they even interviews. So the shock of the hour, we are offering the shock of the hour now specifically by subscription to those who follow, appreciate and even want to be a part of the family of Radio Anu. So if you miss the mystic vibration previous night, or if because of work or whatever it is, you are not getting to listen to the mystic vibration, specifically the shock of the hour, now you can subscribe specifically towards the shock of the hour, a monthly subscription of only 50 United States currency dollars, and you will get every edition of the shock of the hour, the evening after it is broadcast, and it will come straight to your email, straight from us each and every day. So every episode of the Mystic Vibrations Shock of the Hour, Monday evening by Tuesday morning, you have it in your email. Tuesday evening by Wednesday morning, you have it in your email. Wednesday evenings, Shock of the Hour on the Mystic Vibration by Thursday morning or even before depending on the load that we have, you definitely have it in your email. So as I said, that is a monthly subscription specifically, and that is only $50. Now that is 16 or more programs, 16 or more episodes of the shock of the hour. And the shock of the hour is not just yap, 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 talk, talk, talk. We specifically take our time, obviously, and make sure we orchestrate a proper program to bring to the people that will uplift your meditation, uplift your thoughts, uplift your knowledge at least, inspire you, motivate you, even even encourage you to, 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 to change or even get better at whatever you may be already involved in of right. So the mystic vibration is definitely a service to the soul. And I'm sure many of the individuals who are listening towards this message understands the value of the mystic vibration and understands that the value of even the shock of the hour so a subscription of $50 a month for almost 16 hours of the solid goal isn't really nothing to, you know, to cry about at all, at all, at all, at all. So that is really um, not a steal of a deal, but that is a blessing that we are giving out now. And of course, ones could show whatever appreciation they may have towards such a work. And that will also assist us even in continuing the, the production of the work so you can definitely um, get the information. And to keep in mind, you know, the mystic vibration doesn't have a price. It's aired once again every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Free of course. No one has to pay to listen it. You may only have to pay on your end or whatever services you're using. But outside of that, we have it there free, of course, and it may be rebroadcast at some other time during the day or during the same strong where it may be produced. That is the case. But you could now add it to your archives, add it to your library, even if you listen to the Mystic Vibration every night, which is good that you get it live. It would be still good, 
that you literally um, subscribe and literally get it mailed to you every day and you can stack it in your library even for you know your own record and keeping so again we are now offering the shock of the hour which is the key component of the mystic vibration the shock of the hour the key component of the mystic vibration which of course you know it is exactly what you know us about us what we're all about the knowledge and the information and the inspiration and the different levels we'll be definitely doing series which is going to be key eh? uh, especially if you heard one program and then you missed the next program but then you come in on the other program there'll be a big gap there no that is not going to work at all so especially when these series come up and, and basically the mystic vibration in general is a series so when these specific series is come up you will definitely want to get your copy of such so as i said give thanks you know how to contact us our contact number area code one two six eight seven two eight three one six two one two six eight seven two eight three one six two you could call or whatsapp and of course our email priest isaac uh, 27 at gmail that come and of course you could still attempt the black shepherd at live um, that come as well and of course we are very thankful as i said for your presence with us and it will be wonderful and blessed as we continue to do such works in righteousness so yes subscribe not to the youtube channel well, subscribe to the youtube channel but I know most of you have already done that, you know, you subscribe to the shock of the hour now and all you have to do to subscribe is contact us and we will tell you exactly what to do. Keeping in mind, it's just $50 a month to be a member of that subscription family. If that's only money, Celestia, Jack, Rastafari, that's it.